This lesson explores learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard to evaluate the meaning of a wide range of written, visual, audio, and audiovisual texts. Learners should be able to recognize the difference between direct and implied meaning. Hi, in these lessons we've been looking at the different devices that are used to create humor. In today's lesson, we're going to see how there can be more than one meaning to some messages. We're also going to look at an example of the humorous device, parody. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define and identify implied and direct meanings, define and identify an example of parody, by now we are all familiar with the idea that communication is all about messages. We can communicate with words that are either written or spoken. For example, if I say, I'm hungry, you understand that I mean that I need something to eat. We can also put this message into words. I could even communicate this message without using words by showing you in actions. Or, I could show you this message using a picture. So, as we've seen, we communicate messages in many different ways. When the message is simple, there's no problem understanding what is really being said. Look at these examples, I'm sure you'll know what they mean. When there's only one meaning to a message, like in the signs we've just seen, we say that this is the direct meaning. In other words, the direct meaning is the simple meaning in a message. Take a look at these messages again and say what the direct meaning is in each case and where you are likely to find the message. The direct meaning is stop and this sign is mainly used on roads for traffic. This is the symbol for females and it is mainly used in public places on the doors to toilets for women. The direct meaning here is that people are not allowed to smoke. You find signs like this in public places where it is illegal to smoke. In this case, the direct meaning is that we must be quiet. You might see a librarian using this sign in a library or your teacher may use this signal to remind learners to be quiet. These direct meanings are easy enough to understand, but what about when a message has two levels of meaning? For example, listen to this conversation. I don't know, this Friday night I'm having this really big party and I'd really like you to come, so. Um. Yeah, I'd love to come. In this case, there are two meanings. The first meaning is found in the words, I'm sure I'd love to. The words say yes, which would be the direct meaning, but. Um, yeah, I'd love to come. The way the learner says the words and his body language say to us that he actually isn't happy about going to the party. So, the implied or suggested meaning is that he doesn't want to go. In this case, there's a direct meaning and an implied meaning in the message. As we saw earlier, the direct meaning is the simple meaning in a message. But the implied meaning is the second level or hidden meaning in a message. We deal with implied and direct meanings or messages every day without even thinking about it. It's almost an automatic reaction and we work out what someone really means by listening for clues in the tone of voice, body language and words that they use. The same thing is true for humorous messages. Quite often, the funny part of the message is the implied meaning. I'm sure you've heard the expression that someone just doesn't get a joke. When we say this, what we mean is that someone doesn't understand the implied meaning of the joke. 
The advertising industry uses humor in many of our favorite ads. Here's an example. This is the message that is painted on the sides of Woolworths trucks that deliver the fruit and vegetables to the different stores around the country. The message reads, full of beans, which is a pun. The direct meaning is that the truck really is full of beans and other vegetables, but to be full of beans is also an expression in English meaning to be happy and full of energy and life. If you don't understand the expression, then some of the humor in the example is lost. In other words, we might understand the direct message, but not the implied message. To find out more about how important it is to ensure that people get the joke in the advertising industry, we interviewed Mahle Kwababa, a copywriter. It's very important that the audience understands the advert if the audience is part of your target market or else you're really wasting your money. Mahle also made an interesting point about how important it is for adverts to be understood by the target market. When designing advertisements, copywriters need to be sensitive to people's backgrounds. Without this sensitivity, you might write something that you think is funny, but it doesn't have any relevance for the audience, or worse still, they find it offensive. I keep in mind um, who I'm talking to. If I'm speaking to a wide group of people, then I'll consider all those people. I'll consider their, their, their life stories, um, uh, where, where they come from. Um, and I'll consider the things that make them tick. So I think that you have to be culturally, most of the time, you have to be culturally quite sensitive. Um, you can't afford to do something uh, that will alienate some people because sometimes when you speak in a certain way or you, you, you speak in a certain way in your commercial that is offensive, you immediately alienate people. And so that actually even affects the brand. So you don't want to do that to your brand. You want to make sure that you have a good understanding of people and you kind of have an idea of who you're speaking to and what they're about. Being aware of your target audience and coming up with ideas that they will understand and find humorous is just as important in designing cartoons as it is in writing adverts. Stephen Francis had this to say about communicating with the audience when writing the Madam and Eve cartoons. Now sometimes people come up to us and say, that last cartoon that we saw in the newspaper, I don't get it. Well, I have to say then we failed because if even a small percentage of the readers don't understand the cartoon, we haven't done our job. Sometimes we do a cartoon over maybe two or three times to make sure that our point is very clear. Because every Madame and Eve cartoon, we'd like to think, has a point. We're trying to make a comment on people, on society, on what's going on in the country today. Uh, but do it in a humorous way, so people will laugh but also think. Here's one that we did on all the election posters that were all over the place. They were on the poles, on the streets, on the trees for a long time afterwards. So here you can see the burglars using them to climb over an electric fence. We see Eve using it to sleep under instead of the newspaper. We have little Tandy, the next door neighbor, using the election poster as a kite. And a kennel for the dog is made out of them. And even Eve is using them as a tray to serve gin and tonics to Mother Anderson. Now, hopefully that's funny. Hopefully it made you laugh. But the point is that we're trying to make is clean up these election posters already. Uh, they're an eyesore. Have another look at the cartoon. What references do you think the audience would need to know to understand the humor? To really understand the humor in this cartoon, there are a number of references that you would need to understand. First of all, you would need to know that in South Africa, every time there's an election, posters go up all over the country. You would also need to know that these posters often stay up for days and days after the elections are over. The humor of the burglars climbing over a fence is clear if, as a South African, you know that we have a problem with crime. Then, the humor in this cartoon also depends on the audience being familiar with some of the characters in the cartoons, like Mother Anderson and Eve. If you weren't aware of these characteristics of our country, then it would be a case of not getting the joke. 
In other words, you wouldn't understand the implied meaning in the cartoon. Knowing what people are referring to is also very important to understand the last device that we are discussing today. Parody. Parody is a form of humor in which one work of art, like a film, book or painting, imitates another. Sometimes a parody is created to make fun of the original text which it is imitating. And sometimes a parody is created just for fun. Watch this short scene from Mark Lottring's show. Think about whether it seems familiar to you. Does it remind you of a certain famous spy? Perhaps the number 007 will help you. Any James Bond movie fans out there will recognize this scene. After all, it's how all the James Bond movies start. Mark Lottring uses the same style as the Bond films, but with some differences. First of all, he takes a famous Bond film title, From Russia with Love, and changes it to From the Cape Flats with Love. Then in the opening sequence, Instead of James Bond holding a gun, we see Mark Lottering with the hair dryer. This is a perfect example of a parody. Mark takes a well-known film and imitates it with some slight differences to create humor. To really get the joke though, you have to be familiar with the James Bond films which are being parodied. To understand the humor in messages, we often have to look below the surface meaning and understand the implied meanings in the messages. Sometimes this is only possible if we know what the writer or artist or speaker is referring to. But don't worry if there are some references that you don't get. Nobody could possibly know everything and therefore there'll always be some jokes or humor that we just don't understand. Up next is the task for today's lesson. Here's an advert, watch it carefully and work out what the implied message is and how this works to make the advert humorous. What does the advert refer to? What references do you need to be familiar with to find the humor? That's it for today. Join me for our next lesson where we'll be looking at the language games that we play in English humor. See you then.